Dear God, thank you. Thank you for this time when we come again to open your scriptures because we want to be led by your spirit. We want to be led by your word, not by our emotions. Speak to us again, we pray. Enlighten the scriptures to us. Give us rima. Give us the necessary bread for our daily life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So today, on this Sunday, uh, if you would turn with me in this online service, if you would turn with me into 1 Samuel chapter 17. And many of you know this is the passage about David and Goliath. Uh, we know the story, but I want to point out some very interesting things in this passage. So let's uh, go through this quickly and stop at certain verses. So, you know, uh, the Philistines are gathering uh, in the battle against uh, uh, Judah and Israel. And uh, uh, they are uh, mocking the Israel armies. And in verse 9, the Philistine, the, the Goliath, comes out and he is mocking uh, these armies. And he says, choose you a man for you. And let him come down to me and let us fight together. Verse 9. If he be able to fight with me and to kill me, then we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then shall ye be our servants and serve us. We know this is the picture of uh, David representing Jesus and killing the Satan and giving us the victory from the slavery. But even in our daily life, this is very interesting, because he says, Choose you a man for you, and let him come down for me, if he be able to fight with me. You know, the world, the system, the Goliath, the evil people, they are mocking us, and they think, like, if there be a man, if there be someone, woman, somebody who would have no fear to face me, and this is what we are facing in this day and age, in this special season. People are fearful and they are kept by the fear. Many people are afraid to take a stand against abortions. Many people are afraid to take a stand against uh, the homosexuality, because the Bible clearly says it's a sin. Many people are afraid to take a stand against the, the right biblical definition or for the right biblical definition of the marriage, which is union uh, of a man and woman, and as I say, out of free will, and the best is in the environment of love. Uh, so many people are afraid to stand up and just uh, be uh, publicly exposed for their beliefs. Uh, we could we could go uh, through many varieties of uh, people in society. You can start, and it's very difficult for these young ones, with the people in the schools, the young students. Many times you see they have a friends and they don't share the Christ, the gospel with them. They are afraid. And then you can go on uh, us as adults on our working places with our colleagues, with our family members. It's the same situation, and then you go all the way up to politicians, you know, the the media and everything. Uh, many people are afraid to take this stand against the Goliath. And uh, you can see in verse 28, David is coming down. Uh, he is uh, now facing his elder, elder brother, Eliab. So David is coming here. He, is, he wants to face this. Philistine and his brother in verse 28 says, Why comest thou hither? And with whom hast thou left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know thy pride and the naughtiness of thine heart. For thou art, car thou art come down that thou mayest see the battle. So here, this is interesting. These are the brothers representing the brothers, the, the our family, uh, in a spiritual sense, the believers, brothers. And if you take a stand, if you make a step of faith, many times you will be misunderstood by 
brothers by other believers uh, speaking about carnal brothers people who are not in a in a living fellowship with God you know the fact that you have read the Bible means nothing I, I've, I've heard many people saying well I have, I have read my Bible well it's one thing but have you studied your Bible are you getting remas from God are you fellowshipping with God and with the body of believers so here are these people who are afraid to face Goliath and they are now starting to mock someone who has a faith and wants to do this uh, step of faith and face the evil you will face it in your life spiritual people will have a problem with carnal people and this is being copied in this story later on in the relationship of David and the King Saul representing the spiritual one versus the carnal one or the fleshly Christian so don't be uh, don't be surprised if you if you will receive some some mocking comments and statements and undermining statements to your faith from from maybe people from your own church the carnal brothers and sisters so in verse 29 he says and David said what have I now done is there not a cause is there not a reason to do this and the reason is there the cause is there you know uh, who will take this stand God says in Isaiah who shall go for us where is the man where is the woman which will say God I know it's not about my abilities uh, it's about faithfulness of yours so we are looking for God's faithfulness and then we can take the stand. We can say, God, just here, here am I. Use me. Use me. I, I am here as a vessel unto honor. Uh, I am giving my life into you. I am giving all I have. Just use it to your glory. And we will see this later on uh, with Jonathan. Uh, so there is a reason to do this. There is a reason to take the stand. You know, it was uh, Moses' uh, mother who refused the... Uh, ordinances of Pharaoh and she said I will not kill my son and she hid him in a basket it was Moses so you see people who just take a stand against evil it's very very important you know uh, that's why we are here like Esther Hadassah in her season you know she said maybe it will cost me my life if I perish I perish perish nevertheless I will go to the king and I will trust his grace. That's why we are here in this season. And in verse 32, you can see that David said to Saul, uh, Let no man's heart fail because of him, because of Goliath. So this is amazing. You know, uh, he's getting this uh, discouragement. Uh, he's now meeting the king Saul because of his uh, uh, speech he's brought before the soul and now he's comforting Saul and he said let no man's heart fail because of him and it reminds me this very very old tape beautiful tape from Pastor Stevens and it's called let's talk about Jesus let's talk about Jesus how do we talk uh, what is the uh, content of our words are we feeding on the fear? Are we feeding on the Goliath? Are we repeating how big was his javelin and how heavy was his sword and how tall he is? Look how tall and how many Philistines are there. That's one type of talk we can lead. Or we can talk about Jesus as a David. You know what? There's discomfort. Let not your heart be troubled because of him. Let not your heart be faint in you because of this evil going on around us you know let not this evil come into your mind and thinking this is the purpose because we are different we are not looking at the situation by natural eyes we don't do the counting of the of the enemies of their number and their strength and their greatness how horrible they are no we recognize it but we turn back to god and we will see it here so this is the comfort. Let no man's heart fail because of Goliath, because of his power and greatness. Let's be comforted. Let's talk about Jesus. Let's talk about our God. 
And in verse 33, and Saul said to David, You are not able to go against these Philistines to fight with him, for thou art but a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. So now you will see another one. We said uh, the Cardinal Saul now is uh, questioning the ability of David, and he says, You are not able, you have no experience, you are a youth, and he is a warrior from his youth. He's very experienced, you know. Many people in their service to God are relying on experience, you know. Um, and of course, there is a spiritual experience. We call it uh, in the church leadership elders, you know, not a novice, but elder people who walk with God and who have certain understanding of uh, not just the doctrines, but, but uh, government uh, in the church, for example. But the experience is not the, the, the leading thing. We are not choosing people based on their experience. We are not giving wisdom and advice out of our own experience. You know, that's a danger. That's a fleshly and carnal behavior. Thinking like, what I'm going to say? Well, I have experienced similar situations, so I can give you advice. No, 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 that's not how we do it, you know. We give a spiritual advice, we seek for wisdom from above, not from our own experience. We are not looking for this uh, carnal friend, carnal uh, encouragement from a soul. Uh, you will have a lot of people in your, in your environment who will be questioning your age, your ability, your education, your health. Your experience, they will say, you are but a youth, you have no experience to be a missionary and to go to mission foreign field. And many, many more. You know, these carnal advices from unspiritual friends. You know, don't receive this. And then uh, the questioning is over. And in verse uh, 38, we see... Now the Saul comes to David and he comes on his terms and he says, okay, you will fight. And Saul armed David with his armor and he put a helmet of brass upon his head and he armed him with a coat of mail. So now, uh, uh, here's this method and let's, let's uh, continue. 39, and David girded his sword upon his armor and he attempted to go for he had not proven it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. And David put them off him. And in verse 40, And he took his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones. You know, uh, in your Christian walk, in these battles, you will give a lot of carnal advices. People will say, this works. This is a good armor. We have tried this. This is a new method, you know. David tried it on and he says, no, I have not proved this. And then he comes back to his stuff, the authority. You know, use what God has given you. Use the authority that you have with the word of God, with the, with the teaching that you have received from our forefathers, with the shepherding, the old method, how to lead the flock, how to lead them to green pastures. Uh, we don't, we don't, uh, we don't uh, swap for a new method. We don't need this new worldly method. You know, the sword, the helmet, this armor, it has not been proven. You know, let's stick with the old method. There is nothing wrong about preaching, about soul winning on the streets, visiting people, praying for them, uh, praying and asking for miracles and healings. Uh, teaching the Word of God line upon line. This is our authority, the Word of God and what has been revealed. We are not changing this for new method. Many, teacher, many churches do in these days. You know, they, they change and they uh, change the preaching for worship. You know, many hour worship instead of uh, preaching you know the worship is extended to two hour worship and then at the end there's like five ten minute message just short one instead of being fed by the word of god and understanding the mind of god this is what we need you know uh this is very important 
let's not swap and change for the new method it has not been proven and let's stick with the old and i say there is nothing wrong and nothing nothing shameful about the old method uh the stuff the authority is there you remember how jesus was casting out demons you know many people they do big theater you know shouting screaming hollering uh dancing you know smoke it sometimes it uh, it reminds me they are invoking the demons instead of casting them out but when you look at the god's method he used his authority he just said a word and they had to obey that's that's the method you know that's the authority the one who is behind us not the theater we do around it's like a policeman when the policeman comes to you and he says you know you have to move your car out of this place just move it there's like no parking allowed you have to obey he has authority why because the policeman is a big and muscle man no it can be tiny itsy pitsy man you know in this uniform but you obey why because he has he has the signs he is a policeman and the authority is behind him so his word has a great power this is the same principle for us when we speak from the word of god the authority of our savior the creator pantocrator the one who created everything is behind us that's the authority we have you know don't change it don't lay aside the shepherd stuff the authority representing the authority you remember in moses and aaron the aaron's stuff budded the authority you know it was given to him you know and david here recognizes this and he's refusing rejecting this carnal advice you know carnal friends you're going through some troubles and they start to tell you oh you know you know maybe you know i know what the word of god says but maybe if you do it this way you know no 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 don't receive this you know uh stick with the truth that we have this is important so verse 39 david took his stuff in his hand you know he recognizes and he says this is it this is what i want this is what i need to stand on the authority of god that was given to me and then uh of course the enemy will despise you verse 42 the philistine looked about and saw david and he disdained him for he was but a youth and ruddy and of fair countenance oh the enemy will be mocking you you know and they will he will be reminding you you are young you are too young for this you are not equipped enough you are not good for this god is looking for holy people because god is holy and you are not this is what the enemy will be telling you you know he will be mocking and and then it says even that he was cursing david by his gods 43 you know cursing uh speaking evil about you it will happen get ready this is the battle but you know david is clinging to his god he is clinging fa clinging faithfully in his heart to the authority that god has given him because the victory is coming and in verse 47 here you go it says and all this assembly shall know that the lord saves not with sword and spear for the battle is the lord's and he will give you into our hands so this is amazing you know david is now turning this mocking of the philistine goliath and he says you know the lord doesn't use the same weapons the worldly weapons sword and the spear if the enemy will be accusing you he will be maligning you speaking evil about you on the facebook internet publicly uh secretly in the, in the church uh you know we are not using the same methods you know we we don't use the spear to pierce people with this evil we have different method we turn to god and we trust him because the battle is the lord's and he will give you into our hands isn't this beautiful that although uh the enemy can be one way we can still be the other way we don't have to react and respond respond to it you know like eye for eye teeth tooth for tooth no we don't do this you know if he is evil maybe we will feed him you know if he is this we can be something else 
we are not using the same methods. No, we are turning to God and we are recognizing our authority and that the battle is the Lord's. And you know what? God will do it. God is amazing and He has the He has He has the ability to do it, not us. God is. And then in verse 50, 52 it says uh, when David came and he slew the Goliath with a smooth stone which came into his forehead and he cut off his head verse 51 in verse 52 and the men of Israel and of Judah arose and shouted and pursued Philistines until thou come to the to the valley and to the gates of Ekron and wounded the Philistines fell down by the way and there is this persecution of Philistines now. So, the act of faith of one man encouraged others. In the beginning they were mocking him. They did not trust him. They did not believe him. But then it turned out the way that he was great encouragement for them. You know, uh, believe it that God will stand the battle for you. And God will stand behind you. That's the authority. If we walk by faith, it will have an effect on others. You know, don't think that, that you, let's say, become a missionary and you go by faith to foreign mission field. And now you will start to think, what am I doing here? Is my part big or not? Listen, just the fact that you went by faith is so amazing and so encouraging to many around you that they may raise and run also. This is so amazing, you know. So you see, it's not so much about what we do but how we obey god and if we are in the place of god where he calls us you know let's have a ear open and listen our god and let's follow his voice let's be spirit led because then we will go to places and god will do things through us in us and around us this is so beautiful so uh his encouragement to others and in verse 54 it says, and 57 he says, And David took the head of the Philistine and brought it to Jerusalem. And then David returned from the slaughter, verse 57. And Abner took him and brought him before Saul with the head of the Philistine in his hand. Oh, somebody would say, isn't this brutal? That David slaughtered this Philistine Goliath and cut off his head you know what you know what it shows no we do no compromise with the evil you know don't let the evil come into your house you know uh you could see it uh in a history many times evil comes and they say give us a little bit and we will let you be you know we've seen this in the second world war ii when they came give us the borders of czechoslovakia and we will let you be czechoslovakia was ready to fight back and then they got betrayed and they gave the borders to Hitler and Germany. And of course, uh, you know, the evil is never satisfied. It asks for more and more and more. You know, there are these cases in Africa. Somebody comes uh, to this uh, village of Africa and they say, give us a daughters and then we will spare the village. You know, and the people... Unfortunately, many times they give them their daughters and the village is spared instead of fighting, fighting for what is yours, you know, fighting for what's God's, what's precious. The word of God is precious. We make no compromise with evil. You know, we will fight. And this is what David did. He cut off the head, you know, no compromise with evil. No, he just, he just, he just annihilated Goliath. And this is, this is so important. That's why he did it. And now, in the chapter 18, verse 1, And it came to pass, when he made end of speaking unto Saul, that the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David, and Jonathan loved him as his own. This is beautiful, because now, this is about spiritual friendship. You know, you may have many friends from, uh, from your working place, many friends from uh, elementary school and so on, so on. You may meet many friends even in the church. But this is a spiritual friend. And what I mean by it, David was uh, 
boasting about God's victory in his life. David was giving testimony about God's work, how he won the battle, and showing the head in his hand, the proof of the victory. Look how we ended the evil, the, the mocking. And as he was speaking, their souls were knit together. It's like somebody who speaks from the word of God, someone who gives testimony about victories of God, and your heart is burning and it, it's knit to his soul. You know, there is this connection. We are looking for spiritual friends, for spiritual connection. This is what we need. You know, you don't need a friend because you are good in soccer and you are looking for another friend who is good in soccer. No, we are not looking for this. We need a spiritual friends, someone who knows their Lord, someone who knows God, and you know him too, and that there is this spiritual connection that God gives. These are the true friendships. Amazing, amazing spiritual, spiritual friendship. Word of God given friendship based on the word of God. And then in verse 4, and Jonathan stripped himself of the robe that was upon him and gave it to David and his garments, even to his sword and to his bow, bow and to his girdle. And this is, this is very interesting because Jonathan is the heir of the kingdom. He's supposed to receive the throne after his father Saul. So he has these signs as garment, the sword, but because of this spiritual connection, he recognizes the anointed David and he gives it to him. Now, don't forget that David is representing Jesus Christ here. And this is our part, you know, when we give our rights to Christ. We have the right to be on the throne, but we recognize the one who is the true one who is supposed to be on the throne of our life. We give him all our rights. He is the robe. He is the sword, he is the bow, you take over. And then he leads our life. You know, if we don't do this, we will be fighting David all our life like a soul. I don't want him to be in my life. I don't want him to be on my throne. Instead of saying, here it is, God, just take it. I give you all. Give all to Jesus. Give all to Jesus. And he will take it. And he will lead you in your life. This is so amazing and so beautiful. And then, of course, you know how the story continues in verse 6. David has these victories. And the women are coming out with the tabrets and singing with the joy and instruments of music. Oh, you know, there is this special reward when people are recognizing that you are you have the spiritual victories. Many people will see it and they will rejoice with you. But Saul, it says here, uh, verse 9, that Saul eyed David from that day forward. You know, carnal friends, brothers, carnal believers, they will be full of envy and jealousy. Get ready. But we are not moved by this. You know, we gave the throne and the leadership to David, spiritual David, Jesus Christ in our life. And we are having great time walking from victory unto victory. Even though people will be casting javelins at you and spears at you in verse 11 and 12. You know what? It doesn't touch you. It doesn't touch you. You just move aside. You don't react. And it passes by. You know, it does not touch you. It doesn't hit the target. And then it says that Saul was afraid. It says here. Saul was afraid, verse 12, of David because the Lord was with him. Isn't it amazing? Isn't it interesting? I thought when you find somebody that you know that the Lord is with him, you should be happy in his company, right? But here it says that Saul was afraid of David because of God in his life. You know what? The darkness has to flee. The darkness is afraid of Jesus in you. The darkness is afraid of your fellowship with God and with the brothers and with being submitted to pulpit and to the scripture. Psalm 133, there's anointing if things are done in order, you know. 
and the enemy is afraid the carnal christian is afraid the darkness in their lives and the darkness outside is afraid and shaking and trembling and they have to flee so let's just let's just uh, stay in these thoughts that we have this great victory not because we are able but because we trust god's faithfulness you know as a as a as uh, David says when they ask him, why do you think you would be able to fight Goliath? And he starts to name and he says, when I was young, I was uh, shepherding my sheep. And it says that he's saying that, uh, uh, that the lion and the bear came. Just let me see. Uh, verse 34, when they were questioning if he is able to go against the Philistine. David said unto Saul, verse 34, Your servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear, and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him, and smote him, and delivered him. Now he says, and even about the bear, he says, and he speaks about these God's victories in his life, you know. They will be mocking you, but just be reminded, God was faithful when the when the lion came out, God was faithful when the bear came out. God will be faithful even with Goliath. The past is just showing you how faithful God is. And you can just brag about God's faithfulness, not necessarily about your abilities. You know, and David just represents his authority that he used. He went against or after the lion, after the bear. He did not give them the sheep. He used his authority of the shepherd. He beat the wolf. He just did it. Because he trusted not himself, but the authority which is behind him, the authority which is God given. He did not trade it for the new weapons, for the new equipment which has not been proved through ages. But he kept the old school the bible the word of god the authority the stuff the shepherding the leadership he brought the victory and this faith is encouraging to to, to others verse 52 all these rose and run because they got infected in a good sense by david's faith so let's just trust god let's trust the authority he's given us let's just be reminded of this Let's not listen to the enemy and his mocking about our abilities or our youth and other things. And let's talk about Jesus. Let's talk about his power, his greatness, his grace, his love, his deliverance, his victory that he has brought. And how he defeated the devil and all the demons. Let's just enjoy the victories God gave us. Let's talk about Jesus. Thank you very much. God bless you. Amen.